Hey, this is Angela with a cup of tea on Monday, September 26, 2011. So I was really surprised at this topic that came in this morning because I've covered it to such a nauseating degree um, and many other times, but I understand the importance of it because we're coming to this, well, we are, we're in the mass awakening now, and we have so many people that are just awakening and it's going to accelerate it's accelerating as we go <clears throat> but we're in it now it's not it's coming it's here and on top of it you know there's been a lot of stuff going on a lot of doomsdayers talking about today being this key date for you know all these um world tragic world events and stuff and yet i woke up this morning and i understood exactly what part of it was about we are here we're in this change and we're moving forward and now is the point for us to decide every single one of us if we are moving forward or if we're, or if we're going to hold ourselves back so the key has to do with accepting our personal legend and letting go of the reins and trusting in in our higher selves in creator in the whole game that we together work together together to create to know that we're coming to, into this fabulous time we're coming into such tremendous change which scares a lot of people but because change in itself scares a lot of people but um, if we learn how to trust then it makes it a much much more moderate and acceptable level of of, uh, of how it affects us and it happens in a much more graceful and easy way. And like I always say, I, my, myself, my personal, my personal preference is without trauma, drama, or illness, and with grace, ease, balance, harmony, and joy. And fun and excitement, if it's appropriate. <laughs> so, and that's my choice. And if it's not your choice, that's fine. But I'm ready, I have let go of the drama, and I'm ready to move, move into that, uh, which is my personal legend, that which I have signed up to do. So in doing that, all of, of, of this whole part is accepting, um, allowing it to, allowing the river to flow, surrendering to it, and embracing it. And surrendering to it can be a, a very difficult thing, and it's something that we're not used to because as an entire society, as an entire world, we are control freaks. And we, we've we learned to believe that um, by not micromanaging stuff that um, then we're not in control of it. However, if we really, the key here again, so this is where the topic comes in. The key is discerning the voice of the higher self. The key is trusting and listening to yourself and, and trusting that you have the right answers. And getting past the ego that is telling you that you can't have them. Because I talk to people time and time again, and they just don't believe they have all the answers. They don't believe that they're worthy of um, being the divine. They don't even think that they're worthy of being loved by God or spirit creator or whatever you want to call it. Because of what we have done in this existence as part of this experience, which has been to disempower ourselves. And how many times have I said that? Where taking back our power, we're taking back our divinity, and we're coming back within to realize that all that's within, all that's without is within, and vice versa, all that's above is below, that we are all one creation, that we are all one, and that in, in being that one, we all have the power and the ability to tap into that divine power. Even some of the most spiritual people will come and say, well, you can't do this unless you do this. You have to do this to gain enlightenment. You have to get here to do this. And it's not true anymore. Uh, we went through that lesson. We went through that experience. And the funny thing is, as much as those same people, uh, you know, those same maybe spiritual leaders, gurus will say, so-and-so is wrong, that this is the way it's going to be, this is, you know, don't listen to them. They're just naysayers. This is the way, this is the way it is. And this is, you know, the beauty of all of it. Then in the next breath, they'll say, and you have to do this this way. And I say this all the time. Whenever somebody says you have to, must, can't, must not, there is a red flag that needs to go up. I don't care who it is. 
it, regardless of who it is, including me. And I'm very careful to try to choose my words because, as I say over and over again, every everyone's journey is so individual. Everyone's spiritual journey is exactly what they need to get to the top of the mountain, to enlightenment. And yes, we are going through. And and somebody asked me that just this past weekend. Uh, well, you know, well, the yogis and the gurus, the shaman, it's, you know, 20, 30 years, sometimes more, to get to their level in, of enlightenment. And then they're put into this category of God realized or whatever, enlightened, all that kind of stuff. Well, why would somebody be able to just do it in a matter of, you know, a year or a couple months or less than that? Because things are changing, because things have changed, because guess what? we are taking out all these layers now of having to do having to do having to do and that's that's okay for anybody if they choose to do that if they if it resonates with them and they say okay i believe this this is my path this is the way i have to do it well then if they say i have to do it that way then guess what they're creating that reality for themselves and they do have to do it that way if they say i have to suffer then guess what they have to suffer um and so the key here is this you, as we all go through this enlightenment, as we all go through this um, evolvement, is more like the term, and the awakening, <clears throat> it's our job, and it will go with the most grace and ease, if we can really trust the voice inside, and the discernment of it being the higher self, the I am self, the divine self, the one that's creating the game, not just playing the game and seeing the whole game board, but creating the game, and and understanding what it sounds like, and being able to discern whether the stuff that's going on around me is 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 truth to me, because you know what, what my truth is and what your truth is can be very different things. So. <clears throat> I can't stress the importance enough on that discernment because my experience is that the sooner somebody can discern the voice of the higher self versus the ego and versus the um, and the ego is is again that pawn on the game board and can only sort of see what it sees right around it it can't see the bigger picture it only makes decisions from experience that's right around it and what it's seen other pawns do what it's what it can see on the path directly in front of it directly behind it <clears throat> and so a lot of times things are based in fear and uh, trepidation and negative uh, emotions because of the fact that it's not looking at the bigger picture it's not looking at what your higher self can see and there's a part for that ego, but it's assimilated in as an equal part of consciousness, of your different levels of consciousness. So, a lot of people, you know, and, and I always come back to this, and they're like, well, how do I know that so-and-so is telling me I have to do this, so-and-so is telling me I have to do that, or, you know, this person did that, or, you know, this person's been out in the public, they've sold, you know, a zillion books, they've made $3 million, or $10 million, or $100 million, and so they must know what they're talking about. Well, it doesn't mean, see, and this is something we've taught ourselves, it doesn't mean that somebody who is just living in a cottage in the middle of the woods is not as enlightened. It doesn't mean that it took that person 20 or 30 years to get there. It doesn't mean that that person is any less important or any less divine than the other person that's making a zillion dollars on his on his or her books and um, and presentations and all that. And it also doesn't mean that the yogi, the monk, the um, spiritual figure that has spent 40 years, 30 years doing what they're doing has to be more powerful than you because we all have the divine within us we all have that power within us the key is 
getting re releasing all of these beliefs that are limiting because they are limiting when we believe that somebody is more powerful and takes away it, it takes away our power we're letting them take our power away from us and i'm not saying not to listen to anybody else what i'm saying is what's really really key and really basic here is tapping back in and listening and saying does this make sense to me is this truth to me is this what I want to do and this is what I choose is this what I choose to do and knowing and trusting that you can tap in not only to your higher self but directly into creator so I'm then I'm gonna let you go and um, this is a huge topic and I'm sure I'm gonna come back to it again and again but it's really 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 important and I understand the importance of it even though it's a, a repetitive kind of thing so over the weekend I want you to over the weekend over during the week sorry I want you to think about seriously who you're looking up to on the spiritual path who are you looking at and saying oh wow those people are just so advanced number one because they have a lot of money doesn't mean that they're like you know perfectly right you know like I said they could be right for them and not right for you um, and and say what do I believe I have to do to be enlightened what do I believe I have to do to take my spiritual path and realize that you can release that. And on that, I'll let you go, and I'll see you Thursday. This is Angela with a cup of tea.